Senator Grassley. Yeah. Uh, we all want to know what happened to Officer Brian Sicknick. Uh, tragic death as a result of that January 6 assault. There's been conflicting reports about his cause of death. Have you determined the exact cause of death? And is there a homicide investigation? Uh, so I'll take the last part of your question first. There is an ongoing investigation into his death. Um, I have to be careful at this age, because it's ongoing, not to get out in front of it. But I certainly understand uh, and respect and appreciate the, the keen interest in what happened to him. After all, he was here protecting all of you. Uh, and as soon as there is information that we can appropriately share, uh, we want to be able to do that. But at the moment, the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, so does that mean, since the investigation is going on, you have not determined the exact cause of the death? Uh, that means we can't yet uh, disclose a, a cause of death at this stage. But you have determined the cause of death. I, I didn't say that. We're not at a point where we can disclose uh, or confirm okay. a cause of death. Uh, it's important for the committee to fully understand the FBI's caseload regarding domestic extremism cases. I have a series of data-driven and data-centered questions for you that I'll give a list of these in sequence. I'd prefer the answers now, but if you don't have them, I'll accept those answers after the hearing as long as you commit to do so. So this is a series of questions. What percentage of your investigation regarding January 6 are predicated as racially motivated violent extremists or white supremacist originated individuals? Secondly, what percentage of our other extremist ideologies for domestic violence extremists, homegrown violence extremists, and international extremists how many total FBI investigations are ongoing? And of that figure, one, how many are motivated by jihadist ideology? How many are motivated by white supremacy ideology? And how many are motivated by left-wing anarchist ideologies? We need data, and I hope you see our need for this data. So uh, can you answer those now, or do you want to get back in writing? Uh, well, I will certainly get back to I'm aware that, uh, that we've gotten a letter that goes through in quite detail a number of specific data requests, uh, and we're working on that uh, response uh, as we speak. There are probably some things I could say uh, sitting here right now. Uh, as I said to the chairman, I, although I don't have the percentage for you, uh, the uh, attackers on January 6th included a number, and the number keeps growing as we build out our investigations of what we would call militia violent extremism. Uh, and we have had some uh, already arrested who we would put in the category of racially motivated violent extremism white uh, as well. Uh, those would be the categories so far that we're seeing as far as January 6th. Now, looking back, bigger picture, because I think the rest of your question goes more to our caseload overall. Um, I could say a number of things on that. Uh, in terms of domestic violent extremism, domestic terrorism, uh, that number is now has grown steadily uh, on my watch. So I've, we've increased the number of domestic terrorism investigations from around 1,000 or so when I got here to up to about 1,400 at the end of last year to about 2,000 now. That's domestic terrorism overall. When it comes to racially motivated violent extremism, that number, again, number of investigations and number of arrests has grown significantly on my watch. Uh, and the number of arrests, for example, of racially motivated violent extremists who are what you would categorize as white supremacists last year was almost triple the number it was in my first year as director. Uh, and when it comes to anarchist violent extremists, which is another category that you asked about, that number has also grown over the course uh, of my tenure. Last year, I think we had more arrests of anarchist violent extremists than in the prior three years combined. Um, Can I stop you there? Yeah. Because you've uh, done a good job of giving us the overall view, 
and I assume in writing we can get specific answers and the numbers are very important. Data is very important. Uh, former acting DHS Secretary Wolf has stated, quote, or not quote, that the lack of vi visibility into the anarchist extremist movement may have caused the federal government to be underprepared for the riots this summer. Former Attorney General Barr stated that the FBI has robust programs for white supremacy and militia extremism, but is significantly weaker uh, anarchic extremism program. So unless you disagree with Wolf or Barr, how do you plan to make your left-wing anarchist extremism program as robust as your white supremacy and malicious extremism program? Well, I think there's a, that's a long and complicated question to answer in a sense, but I'll give you a few things for right now. One is, I think, as with any domestic terrorism threat or frankly any counterterrorism threat more broadly, uh, we're always looking to develop more and better sources uh, so we get more visibility and insight into the plans and intentions, tactics, procedures, et cetera, of any group of violent extremists. Another is to get better at learning how to, uh, to navigate around some of the operational tradecraft that they use. Uh, so the more times, the more arrests we see, and this is relevant both for the anarchist violent extremists and for the racially motivated violent extremists, for example, the more of the arrests that you see, while that's obviously good news for everybody that we're arresting people who need to be arrested, there's a whole other part of that that's really important that I want to emphasize, which is the more arrests we make, the more from those cases we learn about who else their contacts are, what their tactics are, what their strategies are, et cetera. And that makes us smarter and better able to get in front of the threat going forward. Mr. Chairman, can I ask one very short question that I think will give a short answer? And then I'll submit questions in writing if we don't have a second round. Why hasn't the FBI produced the January 5th, 2021 Norfolk memo to Congress? Uh, so that information is law enforcement sensitive. Uh, I'm aware of the interest, um, and I think part of the reason it had been withheld in consultation with the department had been the ongoing investigations that we have, but I certainly understand the interest, uh, and I can commit to you that I will get with my staff and see if we can make that available. Okay. Thank you.